When we hang out, she consistently complains about her dating life, even if we're talking about something completely different. She finds some way to make the conversation about her boy troubles. Though I avoid direct conversation with her about this and leave it to others to validate her, it's become abundantly clear why she cannot bag a man. Lola has a long list of demands, most of which she does not meet. Stay tuned to the end for my insights on why this story is a lesson for men as well. Welcome to the hallowed halls of Magic's monologue. I'm Magic, your curator of personal growth and sage keeper of the keys to today's tome of wisdom and knowledge. Am I the a-hole for telling my acquaintance she should improve herself or lower her standards if she wants to find a man? But before embarking on an expedition through the vast collection of life's lessons and bad choices, demonstrate your eagerness with a thumbs up, subscribe, and smack that victory bell signaling success to become a patron of wisdom. So stow your baggage of doubts, grab a ticket to success, and let's enjoy the ride together. She writes, I have an acquaintance, Lola, 26 female who is single and has been looking for a partner for a very long time. She is on every dating app and wears white whenever we go out to manifest a husband. Normally, I would deliver a cranial reset to the back of the head. However, since this story is by a woman, and in light of the fact the overseers of this platform are of a certain ilk, we will forgo it. Instead, I think I'll go with splash of cold reality. How many men do you know go about manifesting things. As a gender, men built the infrastructure upon which society rests. Historically, we don't hope, because hope is not a plan. We build. I don't choose to hang out with her alone, you'll see why, but she is friends with a couple of my friends, so we hang out in groups a lot together. When we hang out, she consistently complains about her dating life, even if we're talking about something completely different. She finds some way to make the conversation about her boy troubles. Splash of cold reality for Lola. Can we say feminine solipsism? Which refers to the tendency of women to prioritize their own subjective experiences, wants, and perceptions over objective reality and others. Though I avoid direct conversation with her about this and leave it to others to validate her. Well, you're a smart woman. Though I avoid direct conversation with her about this and leave it to others to validate her, it has consistently become abundantly clear why she cannot bag a man. Lola has a long list of demands, most of which she doesn't meet. She wants someone who is ambitious in his career, makes six figures. She works part time and lives with her parents and doesn't seem to be in a hurry to move out. He needs to go to the gym regularly and take care of his body. Lola is overweight and hates exercise. He needs to play an instrument and be into music Lola says she's never picked up an instrument in her life. He has to be over six feet tall. Lola is five feet two. She complains that when we go out, no guys approach her. But I've seen plenty of guys ask her to dance, buy her drinks, etc. And she rejects them all. Splash of cold reality for Lola. Can we say cognitive dissonance much? Stay tuned to the end for my comment on this. Yet, she works part-time. She lives with her parents, is overweight, 
and does not engage in activities that align with her desired partner's interests. I have to wonder if this cognitive dissonance creates frustration and hinders her ability to attract and connect with compatible partners. Viewed another way, in the sexual marketplace, SMV, she, hypothetically, could be a four thinking she deserves and will someday magically, sorry, I meant to say manifest, an eight, nine, or ten guy to wipe her up. She continues, I stay quiet when Lola goes on her long, frequent rants, but a few days ago, we were at brunch with some other friends and she asked me specifically for advice. My fiance, Jim, is tall, athletic, ambitious, and musically gifted, and she wanted to know how I got him. Jim, if you're watching this, every man on this channel right now hates you. <laughs> Just kidding, brother. Good for you. We all should aspire to be our own unique version of you or better. Plus, you have a woman who recognizes the value of what she has. I try my best to explain to her nicely that people tend to choose partners who are similar to themselves. Jim and I go to the gym together every day. We both are very dedicated to our jobs and we have a lot of similar hobbies and interests. So we have a lot to talk about. I told her that if she wants to find a man like that, she should consider applying herself more in her job, going to the gym, picking up a hobby she wants her partner to have. Otherwise, she could either date a guy who is as interested in her as she is or be comfortable with being single. I thought I was being very polite, but this completely killed the mood. Lola got very upset and accused me of fat shaming her. I never said anything about losing weight, just going to the gym because she wants her partner to go to the gym. One of my friends told me Lola is worthy and deserving of a great guy and doesn't need to change herself. Aha. Uh -huh. I effectively ended the brunch with what I thought was helpful advice. Afterward, I got some texts from friends demanding I apologize to Lola, but others supported me and told me that I was right and Lola was way too sensitive. Okay, no, you are not the a-hole she is. Let her friends enable her failing behavior systems and strategies. Go live your best life with your future husband. In my opinion, I see a couple things going on here. One, unrealistic expectations. Lola seems to have a long list of demands for her personal partner, many of which she does not meet. This discrepancy between her expectations and her characteristics suggests a lack of self-awareness and a tendency towards unrealistic standards. Also, Lola is 26 years old and in her epiphany phase, where women often reconsider their priorities and begin to seek long-term committed relationships, in this phase, women often have unrealistic expectations and a sense of entitlement. Expecting to attract the same caliber or higher men they could have in their early 20s. Lola's demand for an accomplished, fit partner while not meeting those standards herself could be indicative of this mindset. 2. Cognitive dissonance. There appears to be a disconnect between Lola's stated desires and her actions. She claims to want an ambitious, fit, and accomplished partner. Yet, she works part-time, lives with her parents, is overweight, and does not engage in activities that align with her desired partner's interests. This is before we even consider SMV mismatch. 
I can't help but suspect she's shooting for guys four to five levels higher and in an extreme case of hypergamy where women are biologically wired to seek partners of higher social status and resources. It can happen. In her case, people do win Powerball and chances are it won't be her. Three, defensiveness and lack of self-reflection. When presented with constructive feedback, Lola reacted defensively and accused you of fat shaming, despite your efforts to provide helpful advice. Her defensiveness and inability to engage in self-reflection can prevent personal growth and make it difficult for her to address the underlying issues that may be contributing to her dating challenges. Lola's defensiveness and inability to accept constructive feedback could be viewed as an expression of a solipsistic mindset. Where this is important for men is to take note Lola is becoming more and more common and comes in a variety of physical packages. Pay attention to the lessons here and be mindful when you encounter women in the dating market. This is especially true if you're the guy women never give the time of day to. Now that you have some financial success, the girl who ignored you, friend zoned you, suddenly finds you hot. Don't be fooled. Question with boldness. If you found value in this video, please show it by doing three things. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that bell, and share this with at least two friends. I want your personal stories to share, and if you see an article online you think I should cover, send the whole story and the link, just in case it's not there by the time I get to it. Email it to stories at magicsmonologue.com. This way others can learn from your victories, joys, and defeats as we work to not only support each other, but to help each other become better men. This is the best way to help grow this channel and support me. If you have a moment, stop by my YouTube community tab and vote on my surveys or subscribe to my Rumble, Twitter, Getter, and Gab. In doing so, you are certainly helping to educate other men and have the best revenge by living well. Until next time. Thank you for watching. Before you run off, check out these other videos and don't forget to please give them a thumbs up to help me out as I create more content.